I'm Emma with Emma's Crafternoons, and today I'm going to share with you how I use the wing needle to make the scalloped detailed edge on my daughter's first birthday dress. You can see here how it looks like I used an eyelet material between the lace layers, but in fact it was actually the regular fabric just finished with the wing needle using my regular sewing machine and a couple stitches that I'll share with you today. All right, quickly, just a few basic uh, supplies that I used. Obviously, fabric. This is a really lightweight, beautiful seersucker. So because it was a lightweight fabric I was using, I also found it necessary to use a stabilizer. This is a mid-weight iron-on tearaway stabilizer that I used. Depending on the weight of fabric, you might be able to get away with just a, if you're using like a heavier weight linen, not using a stabilizer, again, you'll have to play around with whichever fabric you're doing this on. As far as thread goes, I do recommend using a lighter weight, um, possibly an embroidery uh, weight or a silky thread because most of these stitches are very dense. If you're using too heavy of a uh, thread, they might kind of jam up. Now, if you're using this stitch along a flutter, as I did on the shoulders here, I found it best to draw that pattern after stabilizing the fabric. I drew along here, and then I followed while I was stitching um, with my foot the pattern and then trimmed it after doing the stitches. Initially, I had cut out this pattern piece and tried the detail stitch on that. It did not work as well um, because you're trying to finish the edge. You need the extra fabric there. And lastly, the needle. So the wing needle that I got, um, you'll see it says wing here on the bottom, but it's also called a hem stitch needle. So depending where you're ordering this from, uh, you might need to search for a hem stitch needle or a wing needle. I'll try to link uh, this particular one that I got in the comments below. For this project, the specific stitches I used were number 37, and 50. Here's a few of my samples that I practiced with before settling on this combination, which ultimately I still put these two together closer. You can see this is another nice stitch. It's 55 on the machine. Um, I've also seen people put a piece of ribbon under here is a really pretty detail. And then as far as using the importance of using stabilizer with this lightweight, you can see how this got really bunched up um, and does not look very nicely finished without using the stabilizer, just in case you wanted that example. Once you've stitched along your fabric, either a straight edge for ruffles, or as you're seeing here, this is where I drew the pattern on, you're going to have to trim along that scalloped edge. So this does take a little bit of time. Again, this isn't a fast fashion technique, definitely an heirloom technique. And having a small pair of sharp scissors, such as these Fiskars I'm using here, is very helpful. After you're done trimming that scalloped edge, you'll want to remove your stabilizer. You can see I started with the larger piece and this piece was definitely the easier piece to remove. For the smaller area with the stabilizer between the star or little flower design and the scalloped edge, I ended up needing to use these scissors to loosen it up a bit. Probably could have used a pin or a larger needle for this area as well to get it started. You'll then simply have to work through the rest of your pieces. For this dress, it did end up being a flutter for each sleeve and three layers of ruffles for the bottom. This would look adorable even having just in the bottom of a skirt if you were doing a dress rather than a romper because this is definitely the most time consuming part of this technique. There you have it. I hope these tips helped you and I can't wait to see what you use your wing needle for to finish detailed edges on your projects.